In today's video, we'll be walking through the development of a Windows desktop application using JetBrains Compose and look at how you can integrate this development with your own Service Stack APIs. JetBrains Compose is a modern UI toolkit that enables you to create native applications using Kotlin. We'll integrate it with Service Stack by leveraging the Add Service Stack reference feature for generating type safe Kotlin APIs. This will allow for a seamless end to end typed experience, making the most of the Kotlin language by reducing errors and speeding up development. We'll be focusing on the development of a desktop application on Windows, but it's worth noting that JetBrains Compose also supports applications for MacOS, Linux, and Android, as well as experimental support for iOS and web as well. This means that the application we develop today will be able to run cross-platform across Windows, Linux, and MacOS as a desktop application with little to no changes, providing a great alternative to application frameworks like Flutter for those that are more comfortable with a language like Kotlin. Before we begin, we'll want to make sure we have a few things installed. We will need the JetBrains IntelliJ IDE for Kotlin and Compose development, as well as your favorite IDE for C Sharp and .NET, which could be JetBrains Writer, Visual Studio, or VS Code. Today will just be a getting started for using these two technologies, but if Kotlin or C Sharp is not your primary development language, I'll leave some links in the description to some excellent resources which will help you get up to speed. And we also have a whole range of videos on this channel if you want to dive into any more specific topics of development for Service Stack. Okay, so now starting from scratch, we'll want to do a few things to set up our environment for developing both a Service Stack API and a JetBrains Compose desktop application. So first, let's create a new Service Stack API project. You can do this by opening your terminal and running the command x new web space my app. This will scaffold out a new Service Stack project for you. If you don't have the Service Stack.NET X tool installed, you can install it using the command .NET tool install gx. This will be the basis for the repository we'll use for our new application that will contain both the Service Stack API and the JetBrains Compose desktop application. We will use a template from JetBrains to create our initial application, but to do this, we will also need a plugin installed in the IntelliJ IDE. You can do this by opening up your IntelliJ IDE, going to settings, plugins and search for JetBrains Compose. Click install and add the plugin. With the plugin installed, you will have access to a ready-made JetBrains Compose desktop application template, making it easier to start building your application straight away. And we can use this new template by going to the File New Project menu and selecting the Compose for Desktop from the left-hand side. Provide the details for your new project and create it in the same repository as the Service Stack web project we created earlier. Now that we've set up both the JetBrains Compose and Service Stack projects, let's dive into integrating them together. We'll start by creating an example file search API in Service Stack, which we will then go on to integrate into our desktop JetBrains Compose application. This API will allow the desktop application to search the file system of the API host, which we will then integrate using the Kotlin language via the Add Service Stack Reference feature and the Service Stack IntelliJ plugin. First things first, let's define our service contract for our API. We can do this by creating a new c -sharp file called searchfiles.cs within the myapp.service model project. The search files request DTO will simply have a single property of a string type called pattern, and the response will return a list of strings in the property results. Next, let's move on to the API implementation. We will create a new c -sharp file called search files service in the myapp.service interface project. 
Here we have a search service which inherits from service, which has an any method that uses the request DTO search files. That means that this service will respond to any HTTP method type such as get, post, put, etc. In this method, we will use the virtual files interface and call the get all matching files function, passing in a pattern from our request DTO and then return the results. By default, this virtual files interface will be configured to point at your local file system of the API host, but it can be configured with a wide range of virtual file systems, including AWS S3, Azure Blob Storage, R2, etc. So with our new API created, we can run the server stack application and leave it running. It will be listening on localhost port 5001 by default, and this is the address that we'll integrate with with our Kotlin JetBrains Compose desktop application. Switching back over to the IntelliJ IDE, we can now start the integration. We'll be using the Service Stack IntelliJ plugin, which is also available on the JetBrains Marketplace. Just like how we installed the JetBrains Compose plugin, we can look for Service Stack and install the Service Stack plugin as well. This will enable some new menus, including one to add a Service Stack reference. We can then provide the localhost 5001 URL, and this feature will generate the Kotlin request DTOs for us directly from our locally running API server. If you prefer command line tools, the X tool can also do this for us by using the command X space Kotlin space the URL of your local running Service Stack API. By using the Service Stack IntelliJ plugin, we get the added benefit of it automatically attempting to update our dependencies registered in the build.gradle.kts file. This adds the net.servicestack client library as well as the Google JSON library for handling JSON payloads. Next, we'll update the code in our main.kt file. This is where our desktop application is running, and with the example, it has a very simple bare minimum application that simply launches a desktop window. First here, we will add a function to call our API service. This will use the DTOs that we generated from our running API service. So in this case, we can see here, we have access to search files. We will create a request, populate a pattern from a text field, and then take the response back using a search file of response, which we will then store as a list of strings, which represents our list of files we're getting back from the server. Notice here that we're getting these responses back in a type safe manner. All we're doing when creating the JSON service client is pointing it to our base URL of our API. After that, all requests are made by populating a request DTO like search files, and we get a search files response or a typed response back. And this maps to what we see in our service stack API, where we use the iReturn interface on our search files request DTO, which tells that our API has a service contract that takes in a search files request and responds with a search files response. There are a few other things worth noting here. First, we have the trust self-signed SSL method call at the start. This is essential if we are running SSL locally, which we are in this example. Since we're using ASP.NET's development certificate, we need to enable self-signed SSL. We then have a couple of remember mutable state of statements. This is a compose specific function that will hold the state of our application. We have one for the text field and another one for the search results. And lastly, we have the coroutine scope launch. Kotlin's coroutines handle the asynchronous API calls. We create a search files request, fill in the search pattern from our text field and execute the API call inside this coroutine. This means our application stays responsive and the UI thread is not locked up while waiting for that API response. So that covers the actual parts we need to perform the integration with our Service Stack API. We have the JSON service client, which performs the actual API calls. 
we have some application state for taking data to and from our application and the coroutine scope for making sure that our UI stays responsive. With that set up, let's look at how we incorporate this into some UI elements. Here we have just 70 lines of Kotlin to represent all the visual and behavioral elements on screen for our desktop application. The Kotlin code for creating these UIs is very concise and very powerful to use since we have the Kotlin type system backing us up when making changes. First, we have an outer column that serves as our container for arranging the children vertically and centering them. We then have a text element which we have for a banner with a basic background color, followed by a search files heading which acts as a label for our basic text field. The basic text field allows users to input their search patterns, which is then used in our call service every time a value is changed, since here we are using the onValueChange hook. And lastly, we have a lazy column, which is used to list our search results in a scrollable way. It's efficient because it only renders the UI elements that fit on the screen. So by adding these few UI components, you have a working cross-platform JetBrains Compose desktop application integrated with a Service Deck API in a type safe way using the native Kotlin language. As we've seen in this walkthrough, JetBrains Compose is certainly providing a great development experience, and it stands as a compelling option against competitors like Flutter. Regardless of which option you choose for your next cross-platform desktop or mobile application, ServiceStack's framework and tooling has you covered by giving you a fast and reliable way of giving you an end-to-end -end typed integration. If you are building your own cross-platform desktop or mobile application using a UI framework, let us know in the comments which one you're using and why. We're always interested in feedback around different ways people integrate their applications. So you can let us know how you do it in our community Discord, our customer forums, or our GitHub discussions. Service Deck is free for individuals, so anyone is welcome. And as always, thanks for watching.